us with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, kids, before you go to bed tonight, why not have a treat? A big slice of Betty Crocker white cake and a glass of milk. If your mom has Betty Crocker white cake mix on hand, it couldn't be easier. In fact, you can surprise your folks and bake a delicious white cake yourself. The finest ingredients are right in the mix. So all you have to do is add water and the whites of two fresh eggs. Isn't that easy? And quick, too. You just pop it into the oven, and the result is always perfect. Betty Crocker promises you a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. And you can frost your Betty Crocker white cake with a thick, creamy chocolate frosting. Or enjoy it plain with a dish of ice cream. You know, Betty Crocker white cake has all the special goodness and keeping quality of the best homemade. Ask Mom to keep several packages of Betty Crocker cake mix on hand and bake up a perfect cake soon. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. Hooray! Shortly after the Civil War ended, General Hazen was placed in charge of the Department of Indian Affairs. Hazen tried to be fair with the Indians, but many of the agents employed by the department were unscrupulous. Slate Jetty, the agent at the Lone Pine Reservation, was one of the worst. When word of his dishonesty reached Hazen, the general acted immediately. He notified Slade Jetty that he was sending the Lone Ranger to make an investigation. But instead of going to the reservation personally, the masked man sent Toto to call on an old medicine man named Red Feather. In his teepee, Red Feather greeted Toto warmly. Tonto, a long time since me see you and masked friend. Ah, Lone Ranger want to see you now, Red Feather. Come, we take you to camp near here. With a letter from General Hazen in his pocket, Slate Jetty drew rein in front of Red Feather's teepee half an hour later. Oh, oh. oh. A gunslinger named Buck Morgan and the Indian chief Black Eagle were with him. The three partners in crime hoped to conceal their guilt from the Lone Ranger by killing Red Feather. As he dismounted, the mission-educated chief said, Red Feather not here. Well, he must be on the reservation somewhere. We will look for him. While you're at it, I'll ride to town. For what? To try to find out if anyone's seen or heard about the Lone Ranger. He wouldn't be foolish enough to appear in town with a mask over his face. There's no telling what he'll do. Yeah, let me know what you find out about him, Buff. Right. Get Come. him. Come, Slade. We will look for Red Feather. We must get rid of him before he tells the masked man what he knows. <laughs> Where we look first? First, we will see if his horse is gone. If it is, we will follow his track. Tuttle guided Red Feather to a hillside clearing where a tall, broad shouldered man wearing Indian buckskins waited for them. As the medicine man drew rein, he looked quizzically at Tonto. Oh, 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 oh. Tonto, you say you bring me to Lone Ranger? That's right. Huh? Where, masked friend? <laughs> Don't you recognize me, Red Feather? You? Your voice is well, him, Lone Ranger. But him look like Indian. By posing as an Indian, I hope to learn the truth about what's going on at the reservation. Oh, that's plenty smart. That way, Indian agent not able to keep you from finding out about trouble. Does he know about it? Uh, me think him crook. Do you have proof of that? No proof. Only suspicion. 
Did you know Indians from the reservation have attacked state coaches and supply trains? Uh, me no. There are ten, twelve young braves there, led by Chief Black Eagle. Oh, Black Eagle was the oldest son of Chief Lame Bear. Oh, that's right. When Chief Lame Bear die, Black Eagle become chief. Black Eagle, mission-educated Indian. Him know how to read and write white man's language. But him not good chief. What about his younger brother, Little Crow? Little Crow, good Indian. But him afraid of Black Eagle. Not bad. Little Crow, not chief of tribe. Where did the renegade Indians get their weapons? Uh, maybe Indian agent give them to him. Slate Jetty? Uh, him or friend. Name of Buff Morgan. How you learn about attacks? The driver of the last stagecoach attack wasn't killed. After the Indians and the two white men with them left, the driver managed to reach town. Me wonder why people in town not suspect Indians before this. There were no tracks to show that Indians took part in the attacks. But the law did find tracks left by two horses wearing shoes. Oh. Everyone thought two white men were responsible for the crimes. Uh, Chief Black Eagle even smarter than me think. The wounded driver reached the sheriff's house after dark. He was afraid to talk for fear of being killed. Until Sheriff Wilson promised no one would know he survived. Uh, me, Savvy. Wilson concealed him in his house and sent a secret report to Washington, saying that a dozen Indians and two white men attacked the state. Uh, what happened to Driver after that? He died. Oh, too bad. Yes. The men who killed him will pay for it, Redfeather. Uh, who sent you here? General Hazen. Sheriff Wilson and I will work together. But I'll not go to Wilson until I have evidence enough to arrest the guilty men. Me no guilty men. One night me see him come back to reservation with loot. Me watch him hide it. Does anyone know that? No. Me keep quiet. For the same reason stagecoach driver keep quiet. I understand. Me think it's smarter to wait for a chance to act. But it's plenty hard to do anything with crooked agents in charge reservation. Me not even able to go town to see Sheriff. You may have run a risk coming here. Uh, it worth risk to see you. Tell you what me know. Unknown to the disguised Lone Ranger and his friends, Slade Jetty and Black Eagle approached the campsite on foot. The wise renegade moved carefully, lest he betray their presence. But suddenly he stopped and pointed to the clearing ahead. There is Red Feather Slade. Talking to two redskins. I... Hey. Quiet. Want them to hear us. One of those engines is Tonto, the friend of the Lone Ranger. Yeah, I saw him once years ago. The masked man wasn't with him, but I remember meeting his engine pal. Who is the third Indian? I never saw him before. I wonder how much Red Feather told them. I'm wondering where the masked man is. His Indian friends must know that. Come on, Chief Black Eagle. We'll get those three. <laughs> A moment later, the disguised Lone Ranger, Red Feather, and Toto were startled by Chief Black Eagle's sharp command. Raise your hands uh, and do it fast while I blow your heads off. Chief Black Eagle! We followed you here, Red Feather. All three of you are covered. Chief Black Eagle, why you come here with Slade Jetty? You will answer the questions, Red Feather, not Black Eagle. I will cover them, Slade, while you disarm them. First, I'll see if Red Feather's armed. You know me not carry guns. I'll make sure of that. And you'll disarm your pals. They might try a fast move if I try to take their guns. Let's see. Yeah, I reckon you were telling the truth. He has no weapons? No. Red Feather will cover you and your pals while you take their guns. Me not take guns from friends. Do as I say or I'll kill you now. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. That cowboy ride that bronc. Who is it, Lone Ranger? That's champion, Bob Burroughs. Watch him stay in that saddle. Well, he sure makes it look easy. Well, you know it isn't. Bronc busting is hard to do, harder to learn. Take Bob Burroughs. I know he started riding as a youngster. He took his share of spills, but he kept at it. And he kept in condition, including eating his Wheaties. In fact, now that Bob Burroughs is a champion, he still eats Wheaties. Plenty of practice, plenty of the right food. That's sound advice for anyone hoping to be a champion. It sure is, Lone Ranger, because champions are made, not born. 
And there's a good solid reason why Wheaties can give you the energy to go a long, long way. It's this. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. A whole kernel of wheat. The cereal grain that's famous for energy. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Now to continue. When Red Feather refused to take his friend's weapons, Slade stepped toward the old medicine man with a hand upraised to strike him. Covered by Chief Black Eagle, the Lone Ranger had no chance to draw his own gun. But he spoke quickly to save Red Feather from the blow. It's all right, Red Feather. Take our gun. You! You do not speak like an Indian. Nor do you. I am mission educated. I read and write better than a lot of white men. I also learn the white man's language. You learned your lesson well. Yeah, mighty well. Keep your hands high. Red Feather, disarm them. Red Feather obeyed without speaking for fear he might say too much and betray the Lone Ranger's identity. When the disguised Lone Ranger and Tonto had been disarmed, Slade tied the wrists of the prisoners. Then Chief Black Eagle asked, Where is the Lone Ranger? Me not know what you mean. There's no use lying, Red Feather. I know he's coming here to make an investigation. Wait, Slade. Huh? If the masked man is to meet them here, he may surprise us as we surprise Red Feather and his friends. Yeah, that's so. We will take them to Buff Morgan's cabin. Good idea, Black Eagle. <laughs> By mid-afternoon, Black Eagle and Slade Jetty reached Buff Morgan's cabin with their prisoners. A few minutes later, Buff returned from town. Slade explained how and why the three Indians had been captured. Good work, Slade. You were smart to bring him here. What did you find out in town about the Lone Ranger? Nothing. No one's seen a thing of the masked man. Did Tonto ride the white horse I saw outside? His redskin pal rode that stallion. The horse belongs to the Lone Ranger. What? The what? There's a complete riding outfit and a mask in the saddlebags. Also a pair of ivory-handled coats and a cartridge belt full of silver bullets. I told you the Lone Ranger would be too smart to appear with a mask over his face. If he is in town, he must be wearing a disguise. That would explain why no one in town saw the masked man. Toto and his mission-educated pal know the truth. We'll beat it out of them if we have to. Redskin, where's the Lone Ranger? If you stop the stagecoach when it comes through Granite Canyon about 6.15 this evening... You will probably find him. There's no 615 stagecoach. Do you think the Lone Ranger wearing a mask would ride with other passengers on the regular stage? Oh, might be a special stage. But if you're lying... It'll be easy to find out whether he is or not, Buff. We'll get the engines from the reservation and go to the canyon. What about these three? We'll keep them here till we find the Lone Ranger. Oh, we'll watch them. You will. But to make sure you have no trouble with them, we'll tie their feet as well as their hands before we leave. After the prisoners' ankles were securely tied, Buff went outside with his friends to show them the saddlebags containing the Lone Ranger's weapons and clothing. As soon as they were out of earshot, Toto turned to the disguised Lone Ranger. Kimasabi, why you tell Crook's story about 615 stage? I wanted to get them out of this cabin. Uh, what good it do to get them out of cabin? We tied plenty tight. Look on the floor near the washstand, Redfeather. Uh, me not see anything. There's a razor on the floor. Uh, me see it. It may be old one. Buff, throw away. No matter how old it is, it'll be sharp enough to cut these ropes. I'll try to reach it before Buff comes back. While Tonto and Redfeather listened anxiously to the voices outside the cabin, the disguised Lone Ranger squirmed across the floor, then fumbled with his hands behind his back until he gripped the razor. I have it. Men still talk outside. Good. If we have only a couple of minutes more, we'll all be free. Reach ropes with razors. I can't cut the ropes on my own wrist, Tonto, but I think I can cut yours. Turn your back. Uh-huh. When your hands are free, you'll be able to release Red Feather and me. <laughs> there. Within a few minutes, all of the prisoners were rid of the ropes that had held their wrists and ankles. They heard Slade and Black Eagle mount their horses and ride away. <laughs> Instead of returning to the cabin at once, Buff remained outside watching his friends ride away. When Slade and Black Eagle were almost out of sight, Buff turned to re-enter the cabin. By that time, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were flattened against the wall, one on each side of the open door. As Buff stepped 
through the doorway, the Lone Ranger grabbed him. Here you The Lone Ranger clapped a hand over the outlaw's mouth while Toto snatched weapons from the startled man. Do you have guns, Kim Bobby? Good. Let go of me. I'll let you go, but don't try a fast move. How did you get free? It was easy, thanks to your carelessness with a razor. What we do now? We'll tie and gag buff. Then I'll put on my own clothing and ride to Sheriff Wilson's office. For... What clothes are you talking about? The clothing you found in Silver's saddlebags belongs to me. You? You mean you? I'm the Lone Ranger. Oh, no. We get rope and tie this time. While Red Feather and Toto tied Buff, the Lone Ranger brought his saddlebags into the cabin. With his back to Buff and the medicine man, he washed the stain from his hands and face and quickly changed from buckskins to his own clothing. When his mask was in place, he turned. Otto, if you stay here to guard Buff, Red Feather will be able to return to the reservation. Ah, uh, he wants crook. Red Feather, would it be possible for you to re-enter the reservation without being seen? Oh, me no secret way to get inside reservation. Good. When you reach it, have someone you trust round up a dozen or more reliable men. Bring them secretly to Chimney Rocks. I'll meet you there at five o'clock. Adios. Adios. The Lone Ranger rode hard to reach town as quickly as possible. On the outskirts of the small community, he pulled his steps and low over his mask, then got his silver to an alley, which led to the back door of Sheriff Wilson's office. He dismounted and went inside. Sheriff Wilson looked up from his desk and exclaimed, Great Scott! Hello, Sheriff. If you were the masked man I'm expecting, you'll have a torn piece of blank paper that'll match up to the piece that was sent to me. That'll identify you. From an oiled silk pouch fastened to a fine chain that hung around his neck, the Lone Ranger drew a neatly folded piece of heavy stationery. General Hazen sent this to me. I'll see if the torn edge matches my hand. The sheriff took half of a sheet of stationery from his desk and placed the torn edges side by side. Satisfied, Sheriff? Yep. You're the man I've been waiting for. The killers we want will attack a stagecoach in Granite Canyon this evening at 6.15, Sheriff. There's no stage tonight. There will be, if you'll cooperate with me. Just tell me what to do. In a few words, the Lone Ranger explained the situation to the listening lawman. I'll see that four well-armed deputies are inside the stage. But it'll be doggone hard to find anyone with nerve enough to drive it. I'll handle the reins. You may stop a bullet if you do. I'll risk that to capture those men. There'll be 14 of them in the canyon. Oh. Four of my men will be hiding in the stagecoach. And I'll get eight more to ride to the canyon ahead of time. Uh, but we may need more than that. We'll have the help of Red Feather and a dozen or so trusted Indians from the reservation. Well, we could use their help, but they've got no weapons. That's why I asked Red Feather to meet us at 5 o'clock at Chimney Rocks. We'll take rifles and ammunition to them. Now, Sheriff, if you'll make arrangements for the stagecoach... I'm on my way, mister. <laughs> Quarter to six, Red Feather with his braves and the sheriff's deputies were in places of concealment. They saw Slade and Chief Black Eagle ride into the canyon. Watch them dismount and select positions for the intended ambush. Slade looked at his watch. What time is it, Slade? Thirteen minutes past six. Listen, I hear the stagecoach. Right on schedule. We must conceal ourselves. Come, Slade. I'm with you, Black Eagle. Joining their followers behind huge rocks along the canyon floor... Slade and Chief Black Eagle waited tensely for the stagecoach to enter the canyon. As the vehicle approached, the sheriff's men concealed themselves, and the thieves saw only the man on the driver's seat. Who is handling the rain? His hat brims pulled so low it hides his face. We will hold our fire until he stops the horses. Just make sure the men keep the passengers covered. They know what to do. All right, that stage is close enough. Stop the horses! You're covered! Keeping his head down so his mask would not be seen, the Lone Ranger halted the horses. From the corner of his eye, he saw the outlaws and Indians step from behind rocks with rifles raised. The masked man leaped from the driver's seat. The move was a signal to the men on the canyon rim. They opened fire. The startled ambushers looked up, giving the Lone Ranger, the sheriff, and his deputies time to reach the protection of sheltering rocks. A moment later, their guns were in action. Get back to the the rocks. The rocks won't protect us from the shot coming from the canyon rim. Then we'll have to get out of here. No. Black Eagle. I hit straight. Help me. Help yourself. I'm getting out of here. Slade and the renegades who hadn't been wounded made a desperate run for their horses. But flight was useless. Bullets from the canyon rim dropped several in their tracks. Others went down under the devastating fire of the sheriff's men and the lone ranger. Hold down your guns while you're still alive. Make a run for the horses. Hey, 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 hey. Just then.
Highlander, who troll Red Feather and other loyal braves, moved into place at the end of the canyon, blocking it. Slade and the surviving Indians halted. Red Feather, you make move me, kill you! Oh, uh, don't shoot up! Uh, I give up! The fight was over. The Lone Ranger, Sheriff Wilson, and the deputies rounded up the renegades. Yeah, that does it. We've got all of them. There's one more, Sheriff. Oh, who's he? Buff Morgan. I'll ride to his cabin where Tuttle's guarding him. We'll bring him into town. I'll be waiting there for him, mister. I'll see you later, Sheriff. Your horse is with mine at the other end of the canyon. Right. Sheriff, after Crook's in jail, me show you place on reservation where Black Eagle and friends... Hide loot from robberies. I'll ride to the reservation with you to get it, Red Feather. Oh, who's this young Indian? Him, Little Crow, young brother of Chief Black Eagle. Oh, sure. Well, Little Crow, with Black Eagle out of circulation, you'll be chief of the tribe. Oh, that's plenty good. Little Crow makes fine chief. Sheriff, me want you know all braves on reservation, not bad like Black Eagle and friends. I know that, Little Crow. And so will General Hazen when he gets a report from the Lone Ranger. of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.